Okay, so first thing is, I have a very serious confession to make. In fact, uh, not many people will know this about me, uh, but I feel here on stage today is a fitting time and a fitting place as anywhere to tell the real truth. So, here I go. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dan Roberts, and actually, I'm a boffin, I guess you can say. Well, I'm a nerd. In fact, uh, one Australian teacher very recently, she called me a tool when I met her face to face, and that's the opinion she, she got when we talked on education forums. But essentially, what I am really is a geek. Yeah. All right. So, perhaps that might have been the first time anyone stripped at TED, so I hope my mum wasn't watching. Sorry, mum. So, um, why am I a geek? Well, I'm a geek for several reasons. The first thing is, is that I've loved school. Uh, and more importantly about school, I love learning, and I always have. Um, ever since I was at school, I would openly tell people how much I loved learning, how much I loved school, okay, which is not the cool thing to do. Um, it probably helped that I was over six foot, so I didn't get teased so much about that. But hand in hand with my love of learning is my love of technology. And even at school in those days, when there wasn't much technology, but there was a little bit, um, I loved it. And so, basically, learning for me was an escape. As I was growing up, it was often my release. In fact, it might seem quite melodramatic to say this, but learning actually saved me at several times as I was growing up. And it sounds quite a big thing to say that. So anyway, I want to talk a little bit about school. So picture the geeks stood in front of you. I'm in a maths lesson. I'm age 12. It's 1992. Probably lanky. I wasn't very goofy a little bit. but um, Now, my maths lessons, I didn't really, well, yeah, I, I enjoyed maths. In fact, it was one of my favorite subjects, but I was rubbish at it. So I don't get that. Uh, perhaps it was the inspiring lessons that I'm about to talk about that did that. Uh, so anyway, maths lessons, there'd be two main ways. Is that's what the formula was. Lesson one, we'd arrive at lesson, and uh, the teacher would say, right, okay, sit down in silence, please. Open your textbooks to page 24 and complete exercise 3A in silence. And so that's maths lesson number one. Um, what basically happened then was I would rush to make sure I finished it. You know, I tried to be the first one to finish, put my hand up, and a teacher would come over, he'd look down at my work for a few seconds, and then he'd go, okay, now exercise 3B, please. And so that was the first type of lesson. Second type of lesson, we'd arrive at class, the teacher would announce, okay, class, today we are not opening our textbooks, and there'd be this buzz going around, real excitement by the kids, we're like, yeah. And, uh, okay, so what we're doing today is copying off the board, and then that would be followed by loud groans, of course. So even though I would class myself as a good student, I was because I loved learning, I was actually really bored in maths lessons. And um, what me and my friends used to do was probably not what we're supposed to do, but we would actually write uh, questions for each other under the desk. We wouldn't pass notes about who loves who and so on. No, no, we would be actually writing maths questions, which is quite geeky, I know. And uh, the whole purpose of these maths questions, though, is that uh, the answer to those maths questions is if we turn the calculator upside down, <laughs> we would get really cool, uh, well, silly or rude things. Um, yeah, I know, it's very geeky. Um, now, what I'm showing you here is this, is this is modern technology for me in 1992. And what I was doing here is we were engaging in learning through technology. Um, yeah, it's not as advanced as these days, but that's what we were doing. Now, the teacher, he, he, he caught us, which he did several times, he said that this was actually a distraction to us. And I, you know, we would say, well, actually, no. Um, this way here is actually creatively extending our knowledge of maths more than you can do and perhaps, or actually, no, definitely more than copying off the board can do. So thank you very much. Um, now, I'm envious of today's generation and hearing some of them talk. It, you're right, you know, I work in a school and it's, it's fantastic to see the power and potential of technology. And I'm jealous. I wish it was like that when I, when I was a kid. Um, now, the only thing is, though, is... Um, sometimes kids don't get to use it in that way. So the way I see ICT or technology is that it's not just a tool for learning, it's a whole new way of learning. Kids can learn anytime, any place, anywhere. Technology can bring the real world into the classroom. It means that as teachers we can better prepare our students for the exciting adventures that lay ahead of them in their future. You know, um, technology, I've seen it, it engages and inspires those students who are disaffected. It does actually make lifelong learners. Um, it can also, you know, um, support the most vulnerable. It can also extend and challenge those most able students. It's a fantastic tool if it's used in the right way. So basically, I'd like to give you a few stories now, because it's always nice to tell stories. Um, and so I'm going to give you four stories. This is the first one, OK? So story one. Um, this is back in 2008. These are all examples from my own classroom, OK? So in 2008, 
my students created a project called Recharge the Battery. Uh, I'll explain what that actually means. So what happened one day is they came into school and they said, sir, um, why don't we learn about insensibly farmed chickens or battery chickens in school? And I said, well, we do. We actually learn about that next year in science. And they said, well, why don't we want to learn about it now? Um, we think it's really important. And I said, well, you do, but you learn about it next year. And we've got this exam you know, in a couple of months, and the chickens aren't on there. But... So anyway, I took a brave step as a teacher. I took a risk. I said, OK, if you're that passionate about this, I will allow you time off from exam preparation during our lessons, and you make a scheme of work, a resource, to teach people about this. So that's what they did. It then got a little bit carried away, because they went and went to a local intensive chicken farm and rescued seven battery chickens to bring <laughs> free range to live in the school. But we did have a small livestock area, which helped. They also then bought the teacher a chicken suit. Yes, that's me there. And part of that was to create a viral campaign to raise awareness in the community. Now, the next bit is essentially the most powerful thing that I was impressed with. They started to integrate technology. They used mobile phones to basically create video and daily podcasts that they would connect to their own website they made. They would then uh, set up a, a cheap webcam for £10, which was pointed at the chickens, which they called the egg cam. And so people all over the world could actually see how the chickens were changing in physical and, sorry, physical appearance and how their behavior was changing. It's fascinating. So anyway, they packaged all this up and sent it out to loads of schools all over the world. And to this state, people are still using this resource that these students created, uh, you know, three years on. And it's been used by hundreds of thousands of schools all around the world, you know, impacting on hundreds of thousands of students. Now, it wasn't about the science that really got me with this. It was the impact that these students from Cornwall had on society. Kids were talking to their parents about where their food comes from. They were making choices as a family about the type of food they buy. That's just, to me, just inspiring. The second story I want to tell you about is in 2009, we were invited, or some 11-year-old students in my school were invited to talk at an Indonesian teacher conference. Now, I was like, oh, this is brilliant. We're going to get to go to Indonesia. Now, that didn't actually happen. That would have been very nice. but. What we did, we were going to do it by video conference. So the students who were very capable of talking on camera, like via Skype and things like that, now that wasn't good enough. We had to go to the local university and use the state-of-the-art video conference facilities. So that's what we did. So at 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning, we had 13, year, uh, sorry, 13 11 year olds there talking about how they were using technology to really use innovative learning practices and how it was helping their learning. Now what we didn't know at the time was, although they were talking to 300 teachers in Indonesia, the national television channel was actually broadcasting it live. And then straight after, we got told that actually the students had been watched by 30 million people. So it's a pretty unreal experience. They're still talking about it now. Of course, they would be. Um, the next quick, I'm, this will be a very quick story. Um, if you want some more information about that, you can contact via Twitter or, or the email there. This is uh, three 13 year old boys who in the summer holidays, or just before the summer holidays, they developed a whole resources for teachers, which is about, um, get, it's called Games Based Blogging, it's about getting teachers to teach students to create their own video games and then blog about it afterwards. And basically, it's, uh, they've, they've, they've basically done the research that it actually improves literacy levels in schools. Uh, they've done a small pilot project and that's now available there. And the final story I just wanted to tell you is that um, you know, over the last few years, we've seen a big increase in our students who are under 16 becoming young entrepreneurs due to the technology and the advances in that. Um, this is one example here. Two of our 16-year-olds, this is 18 months in the making, have been developing their own app for the last 18 months. This one called the saltpash.net e-table is now available on iTunes and Android market. It was, went on sale last week. You can get it for 69p. And it's a, so you can customize your timetable um, basically wherever you are in the world, whether you're a teacher or whether you're a student. Um, that just shows you the, the power and what technology can do for students. So, this all makes me think, and what Sir Ken was saying before um, really makes me think. And one of the things he said very recently was, it's about, it was about talking about where would technology take education in 10 years' time? Will it be in 50 years' time? What, class, what will classrooms be like? He said that education, um, uh, sorry, through technology, is advancing at a phenomenal rate. He said it's basically creating a whole new set of possibilities for education. But where will it go? This is my son, Max. I wonder what maths lessons will be like for him. And I wonder what his classroom is going to be like. He's two years old. He's already a geek, of course, because I'm his dad. But he's already using technology. He's naturally integrated in it. This is him using the iPad, OK? He uses it anytime he wants to, to watch Popat. So I know that some of you might not be able to translate two-year-old speak. It means Postman Pat. But that's what he's doing when he's on there. Now, it makes me think about 
you know, when he goes to school, he will be a natural user. He will be the geek. And what happens in the classroom if the teacher doesn't let him use it? It would be like when I was at school not being able to use a pen. Here lies my biggest fear for education. There's all these fantastic tools, but what happens if we don't let people use it? Now, there's, there are exciting things that are happening all around the world. In August, I went to Reading. I was invited by Microsoft and selected to go to the Partners in Learning Institute. And I met up with 50 teachers from 31 different countries. Yes, it was a proper geek fest. It was fantastic. They all did the most amazing things in the classroom, as in allowing students to use technology in amazing ways. However, the thing that worries me is that that's not going to be the same for all classrooms. I know it's not the same you know, from one classroom uh, to the next. I know it's just down the road from me, the school that doesn't have those types of opportunities. These are the types of schools or education establishments that there's a fear. They see ICT as evil, dangerous, a distraction. They ban it, they block it, they filter it, they confiscate it. I just, I don't know what classrooms are going to be like, like that. It's a concern. So what can we do about it? Well, one thing we can do is educate young people, teachers and parents to use this type of technology responsibly. And then better so, let's trust them to do so. And that's what I want to do today. I want to pledge that I'm going to help try to make that happen. Thank you. All right. I'm not finished yet. I haven't got a lot of time left. Thank you very much, though. <laughs> so this is what we've got here. So this is a site for teachers. I've made, we've created this with an ex-colleague of mine, Dave Garland, from, and we've got some of our kids from our schools to input in this as well. And we're basically creating a community of like-minded people. We want people like, you know, if you're a student here now and you're not being able to use this type of technology in your classroom, we want to help. If you're a teacher, we want to help. Uh, if you've got a head teacher or governors or policy makers or people in local authority who won't let you use this type of technology, then listen up, you need to wake up because you have an obligation to the generation of children in education and those about to go into it, like my son Max, to basically allow them to have the opportunities in this type of way. Hey, here, thank you. But one final thing. My big fear is that the education system faces irrelevance, and maybe I should go and pick my coat up, unless we bridge the gap between how students live and learn outside the classroom, just like Goldie was saying, to how they live and learn inside the classroom. But saying all that, what an exciting time to be in education, to be a teacher or to be a student in education. But just remember, geeks will rule the world. Thank you very much.